If I ask you right now, think of three things that come to your mind when I say the word drones.、Uh, these three things would most likely revolve around killer drones,、uh, camera drones, and delivery drones. This is definitely not all what drones are capable of doing, but I feel that most people find it a bit difficult to think beyond these three applications. And this, in my view, is because of two reasons. Firstly, because these three applications were the ones that created the most hype around the word drone. Secondly, each of these applications, and for good reason, has a, an aspect of fear associated with them, which makes a lot of people really skeptical about a drone development and deployment. For some people, this fear is based in facts. Like, for example, people from countries like my home country, Pakistan, or Afghanistan, or Syria, where drone strikes have killed thousands of people. For other people, it is just a matter of lack of knowledge about this technology. You see, what we do not understand fully, we have a tendency of fearing. And actually, technology. Has this intimidating effect of being, like seemingly being too complex to understand and to trust. I remember my professors from back home; they did not trust Microsoft Excel. They would rather use these paper marking sheets、uh, for exams because they had a feeling that whatever the data they were entering into Microsoft Excel, Excel was kind of altering it, you know. We still have today this kind of fears associated with technology, with like our mobile phones, about the kind of data that they are collecting, and how this data is going to be used against us. We still keep on using these devices and still keep on fearing them. I have a feeling that such kind of fear has a way of hindering development. And. We have to find a way of fighting this kind of fear because otherwise we would not be able to keep in pace with the technological development that is inevitably going to happen. Because scientists like me, in our curiosity and feeling responsible to use our knowledge, would keep on exploring technologies, new and amazing technologies like the drone technology. What keeps me really、um, curious about this technology is its immense potential. From life-saving applications to individual human flight, a feat that we have been、um, hoping to achieve for all eternity. But I also feel that as this technology is developing, we should question this technology and we should、um, understand this technology before adopting it in our daily lives. Because the tools that we do not understand fully, we don't know how to use well, and therefore we have to understand the capabilities of the drones to use them for the positive aspects, which we think are not there right now, which we did not experience so far, and so we have to question about the technology. We have to understand it. We have to turn our fears into curiosity, and therefore today. I'm going to put forth ten questions that you need to ask about drone technology, and you need to seek answers to, so that you can come up with your own creative, new, positive, human-friendly applications. And you could find out where to truly trust the technology and where not to trust the technology, but based on facts rather than fears. So,、um, starting off. The first question would deal with the definition of drones. What? It's a very basic question. What is a drone? In my view, drone is just a technological tool. It's a device that can move in 3D space and can carry whatever you wish it to carry, whether it be guns or cameras or post packages. It is technically all what a drone is: a flying carrier device. The next question is. Who can make and use these、uh, drones? Actually, today, anybody who has the curiosity, the patience, and the money can buy these kits 
assemble them and start using them. It's just like buying furniture from IKEA and assembling it. You don't need um, expert knowledge of flight dynamics or flight controllers or inertial measurement units or all this technical jargon. Actually, in um, 2015, in the UK, there were 33 incidences of drones being discovered in and around high-security prisons. I can tell you with pretty certainty that none of the offenders that were trying to deliver drugs or mobile phones inside the prison had to take uh, aerospace engineering courses before they operated their delivery drones. So, this leads to the third question. If everybody can operate these drones, if everybody can fly them, what about the security robustness of these devices? Actually, sadly, I cannot promise you that these devices are um, completely robust regarding security, because the currently available commercial drones, they um, have to, if they want to operate, they have to be connected to the remote control. They have to communicate with the remote control. And they communicate with this remote control on 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Actually, this is the frequency that uh, your mobile um, computer network, wireless network, is using as well. You see, um, the more the number of devices on a frequency, the more their signals interfere. And there have been incidences where the pilots lost control of their drones because of the interference from other devices, which caused their drones to cause severe damage to people around. And therefore, we have to be really careful where we operate our drones. So this lead to, leads to the next question. OK, there is a security problem. Do we have a ha way of handling this security and safety problem? I think many of you might have guessed, yes, we can operate our drones on frequencies other than these crowded frequencies like 2.4 gigahertz. But this is not so straightforward, because these other frequencies are not free of cost like the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Regarding safety, actually, these airspace uh, regulating bodies like Austro Control in Austria, they demand that you have multiple uh, flight controller on your device that is autonomously flying your drone, so that if one flight controller fails, the control can automatically pass to the second one so that uh, the drone would not crash into somebody's head. Then the question, question number five, is about what people have been always asking me. How do we handle this privacy issue with these drones hovering above our heads? Actually, I agree with you that privacy is an issue. But it is an issue with any camera carrying device, your mobile phones or your uh, the Snapchat spectacles or Google glasses. If you ask me, the solution that I can come up with right now would be, let's ban all these camera carrying devices in public spaces. And that's not going to happen, of course. But to tell you the truth, I think I feel a bit good about the availability of these commercial drones, because they really bring into light this privacy issue that has actually existed for a long time, since the advent of this high-definition satellite imagery, you know. Privacy protection is an important ethical issue, and there are lots of research groups that are working in this direction. Actually, in your city of Clanford, in our institute, there are people that are working on this privacy protection using smart camera systems, so that your sensitive information is going to be protected before it leaves the camera. Question number six and seven are about the regulations in air regarding drones. Question number six is really close to my heart because I love parrots and all birds by association. Um, because we had a parrot, and we used to call it our father's third son and the most favorite son as well. <laughs> they are really intelligent animals. So what about, what would the effect of introducing these devices into our airspace be on the natural ecosystem? I actually once witnessed an 
our drone being attacked by a bird when we were doing outdoor tests. Apparently, the bird thought that this alien-looking bird was a threat to its nest. So we have to be really careful about introducing such alien devices in our ecosystem. I must emphasize that there have been lots of really nice projects where drones have been used for, for example, rainforest conservation or um, uh, for fighting poaching of endangered species, or actually um, for improving the habitat of animals. Still, we have to question introducing these devices in our ecosystem to see their impact on the breeding behavior or, or the, the psychological well-being of animals before these devices kind of cover the airspace and it's too late to regulate. The next question is about regulation. So what are the regulations about these drones being up in the air with all these aeroplanes and stuff? So in Austria as well, and many countries, there are regulations that strictly prohibit you from flying drones close to air airports. But still, there have been lots of incidences where there were near misses involving a passenger plane and a drone. So I think it's our responsibility, all of our responsibility, to really follow these regulations, to take responsibility for the human lives, because every human life is important, and we can't take it um, lightly. I still believe there would be uh, extensions to these regulations when there are delivery drones introduced into the, into the airspace. But in my head, I see it like the road system, which is designed to safely include pedestrians, bikes, cars, and heavy vehicles. So now that I have said the word delivery drones, what about the delivery drones? That's my question number eight. Are they going to be here anytime soon? Actually, they are already here. Uh, companies like Zipline are delivering medicine and blood in places in Rwanda which are not accessible by road or infrastructure. Um, the main challenge basically lies in bringing these uh, drone delivery systems into city spaces, but I technically feel that they should still um, be able to operate very soon over certain distances to deliver certain packages. So I no longer think that this is a thing of tomorrow. I feel like we can call delivery systems with drones a thing of today already. Question number nine would be about things of tomorrow. So what do, how do we imagine having these future futuristic devices, these flying assistants or flying cars? I feel like we have done half the job already. We have fly assistants, we have cars. We just have to make them fly. Um, I think for, I mean, you have your mobile phones there that are your personal digital assistants. We need better power sources and some tweaking to make them fly, and then we have our flying assistants. Flying cars, actually, in Singapore, uh, they are planning to introduce flying taxis by the year 2030. So this is not anymore a thing of sci-fi, you know? So, we come to the last question, question number 10. What are the three things that come to your mind when I say the word drones? I hope that the answer this time is not the same as, I, as it might have been in the beginning. Because if we ask ourselves this question, we can come up with these really, a plethora of really fantastic, fascinating applications, you know, which are becoming real every day. For example, there are like these environment-friendly digital fireworks. The impact is enormous on our environment. Then we have um, drones for precision agriculture that can help feed more people than search and rescue. This is the application that I focus on in University of Clanford. Um, where my colleagues are also working in the direction of delivery drones. Um, so, I understand, when I ask you this question, I understand the fear can really stay in your head, and it might be really hard to uh, forget this fear. I understand that because I come from the north of Pakistan, where the main feeling associated with the word drone is fear in many hearts. 
But I also feel that I can only make a difference if I embrace and contribute rather than fear and reject. Thank you.